Hello and uh, welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, creating a existing elevation exhibit. Um, you can see this is a plan that we're going to create here. You can see that we've got some shaded colored areas that show um, different elevation ranges. Um, this could be used to quickly analyze a site to see you know where the kind of drainage patterns are that you know all the water is going to go to the lower uh, drainage areas. Um, you can use it to kind of see where your highs and lows of your site are. You can do the same thing with a slope analysis. So what we want to do is, is we want to go through the setup of how we went and created this sheet. Now it looks simple in the fact that you have a title block and you're probably thinking you have an XREF and you shade up the colors um, and then create a legend table. We got quite a bit going on here though. We have uh, some sheet sets, we've got some, uh, some data references, um, as well as possibly and even some extras. So what we're going to do is kind of walk through how we created the sheet. And this is just a, a subset of our what we call our plan production v-book. In our plan production v-book we actually will go through and talk about the actual production of a, a plan set, an entire construction document. Not just the civil 3D plan production tools, that's part of it, but also there's a lot that goes into the sheet set manager having your design data as whether it's a data reference shortcut or um, whether or not you're going to use it as extra. So um, each sheet may be set up differently, each project may be set up differently. What we're going to do here is just give you a little bit of a preview of, of some of our instruction of how we would go ahead and, and create this sheet. Now others may have different ways of doing it. Um, this is just one way. There's many ways to do it inside of AutoCAD and or Civil 3D. So I'm going to start with what we have is the sheet set. So I'm going to go ahead and if I, uh, in my sheet set that I have set up, if I right click on this subset, you'll see that it's going to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to prompt me to create a new sheet. So when I select the new sheet option here, you'll see that it brings up a new sheet um, dialog box. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to name this 7A and just so I don't overwrite my other stuff. And I'm going to call it C6 existing. Make sure I spell it right. Existing elevations. I'm going to remove, actually, let's go C6. Go C6 there. I'm going to remove the number in front of the file name. So you see, it's not going to create a new sheet, but it's going to create a, a file name as well. That file is going to get stored in our directory path for our project and it's going to use this drawing template that's assigned to that sheet set or that subset. I'm going to click OK and we'll go ahead and replace that drawing that's there. I'm going to go ahead and ignore this map message that shows up. Um, and what will happen is it's going to create a new sheet in our, in our, sheet, set, in our sheet set. It didn't open the drawing yet, it just actually created that new sheet. We're going to go now down here and we're going to double click on this existing elevations uh, drawing. You can see that it's going to open up a new sheet and it's basically just a sheet with a title block. Now the nice thing about the sheet set, without getting into all the detail, is that all the information on the sheet, such as the, um, the file name, uh, the location, uh, the, the creator, the project number, all that information is part of the sheet set properties and automatically got filled up. So we don't ever have to worry about going and changing any of that information. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over into model space here and I'm going to XREF in the, a design drawing. This is basically just some of the design information, some of the site layout information that is in the, in the drawing. You see it's got tables and sections and stuff. We don't want all of it, all we want is the um, kind of the line work, the, the planning information that is uh, available. I'm going to click OK to that, it's going to bring that information in and we're going to freeze a bunch of layers to kind of dumb it down and just give us the information that we're looking for. So you can see here is our actual design, it's got our existing um, information and we're actually going to, like I said, freeze this information out. So I don't need any of all this data, so I'm just going to go ahead and freeze off all this information, this surface data. Oops. 
go ahead and freeze it. So we're just freezing and hiding this data that I don't want to see. Get rid of these max lines here. Okay. And we'll get rid of that data there. Alright, so I'm left with this information. Um, let's go ahead and freeze off a little bit more here. Let's freeze off this. Oops. Actually, we'll leave that existing payment, turn off the label. All right, so we're, we're left with just the, the runway here that we want to see. And what we're then going to do is, while I'm here, I'm going to go into my layer manager. And I'm going to go to the XREF layer, so the layer, the, the data that I have XREF, this uh, design drawing. And I'm going to right click and select all. And I'm going to change the color so that it's a, a shaded color in my drawing or when it plots. So I have a, a pen table that I set up where pen color 141 is shaded. And I'm going to shade it and drop it all to the background. This may require a regen just to kind of shade it out um, uh, when, you, when you look at it. So now you see it's shaded based on that pen setting. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use some data shortcuts. So if I scroll down to in tool space under my prospector here, I've got my, my data shortcuts set up, my working folder path, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference in some of this information. I want to bring in the existing surface. Now why I didn't use the existing surface from the XREF is because I don't have the ability to control the style. I want to be able to control the color of this surface. So I'm going to create a reference of this, and I'm going to use this uh, style of contours 1 and 5, and I just want to verify to make sure that everything is set up right. So let's go to my contour intervals. And it's actually set to 0.25, which I may want to see, but I don't in this case. So let's go ahead and change that to 0.5 and we'll click OK. So just to make sure that should have been set up in our drawing template. That was just something that got overlooked. Um, so again, it's ideal to make sure all this information is properly set up. So I'm going to bring that surface in, that reference of that surface. And now you'll see I've got the surface in there with the contours the way I want to see it. Now I'm just kind of arbitrarily scaling this. I'm going to set the scale of this here in a second. Um, we're actually going to set it to a, a 5,000 uh, foot scale. So using my, my scale piece down here, or my scale viewport, I'm going to go ahead and, and use that drop down. And I'm going to select 1 to 5,000. And it's going to change the scale. Like I said, it's a fairly large scale um, that we're using, but it gives you the idea um, of how you can manipulate with different scales without having to worry about changing uh, um, label information. So we have our surface that's there. We, we next want to bring in the alignment. So I'm going to go to tool space. Again, going back to my shortcuts, and I'm going to reference in this alignment. I don't need to change anything here. I'm going to leave the style the way it is, except I am going to change that I want major and minor only. I'm going to click OK to this. And it labels all, you know, creates all the labels in there on that alignment. But they're, they're fairly large. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and pick on that. And we're going to go in and I'm going to right click and select uh, Edit Alignment Labels. I'm going to change the increment to 100 and I'm going to set this to 50 so I've got 100 meter and 50 uh, meter for my minor stations so now you see that I've got um, less labels it's a little easier to read um, so on and so forth so before I scroll back out notice one of the things I'm doing is I'm switching between model space and paper space this will maintain that 1 to 5,000 scale of my model I can also lock the viewport and therefore I can zoom in and out. 